In this lab, we're going to set up our pen testing lab uh, by installing Kali Linux and Metasploitable 2. We do this by loading our web browser and downloading Kali Linux from Kali.org. Underneath Downloads, we'll grab the 64-bit ISO. While that's downloading down here in the bottom left corner, we are now going to download Metasploitable. Metasploitable, and we're going to go with number two here. It's available at SourceForge. Click to download. And as always, our downloads will start in just a matter of minutes. This is going to take a few moments, so I will uh, pause the recording at this point and come back to it when they are complete. Our downloads have now completed, so we are going to install them in our virtual box. First, we're going to do the Kali install. We will start this by clicking the new button and naming it Kali because that just makes sense. This is a Linux distribution using Debian 64 bit. We'll use the default memory size, the default create a new hard drive and the default VDI option. Again, default dynamically allocated. This will only fill up space as it needs it. And this is the one gotcha you need to be aware of. The default is 8 gigabytes. However, Kali will need 12 gigabytes to install. Before we power this on for the first time, it's a good idea to change our settings. Kali needs to be able to connect out to the internet using NAT, but it's also going to need an internal network adapter as well. INET down here. Once those two adapters have been created, click OK. And now we're able to start Kali off. We need to direct it to the ISO that we downloaded, located in our download folder. And then we'll start the install. We will do the install using English in the United States with an American English keyboard. Now, if you forget to set your network adapters prior to installing Kali, and that's all right, or we can make that update at a later time as well. Essentially, any time the machine's not running, and then we'll just need to update a interface uh, file. Right now, we're going to use the primary network interface for the one that can connect to the internet. I've set that to F0. Our host name can remain Kali, domain name we do not need. Now you need to set up a root password, try to do something secure. And set your time zone. We will do guided, the default, all files, one partition, and we're going to finish the partitioning. This is the one time you have to change it off default is when you're actually going to write your changes, so select yes. We will accept using the network mirror. And in my particular case, I don't need a proxy. If you need one, please enter it there.
when prompted, install the Grub Bootloader. And once installation is complete, click Continue. Your system will now reboot. Using the bootloader, it will automatically select the Kali installation. And Kali is set up with a nice GUI user interface. So uh, we're going to wait for that to load here. Log in with the account we created. And we're going to open the terminal. Since we have two different network interfaces, we're going to need to update our interface file. We can do that by typing in sudo nano network interfaces. Now, instead of here, we're going to need to make a couple changes. We need an auto F0. This is the NAT connection that goes to the internet. We need to leave that at DHCP. But for F1, we are going to set it up to be static with an address of 10.0.0.0. .0 .0 200 and a net mask 255.255.0 and a gateway of 10.0.0.1. It's not actually going to use the gateway, but it's there just to make sure our file is complete. Control X will exit. We are going to save this and we're going to keep it on the same file name. We will now do sudo etc init d slash networking restart to restart this and now I make the screen larger so we can see everything if I type in ifconfig we can see that f0 is set up on 10.0.2 which is the NAT network and f1 is on 10.0.0.200 Kali is now set up, so we will move on to Metasploitable 2. Before we can select the new button, we're actually going to need to go to our Downloads folder and extract the zip file. This does not actually contain an ISO or any sort of installer. Instead, it has a virtual hard disk, which we are going to link to a new virtual machine we create. So once this is done extracting, We'll move the resulting folder somewhere safe so it doesn't get deleted. I'm going to put it in my VirtualBox VMs folder. And now we are able to create a new VM. This VM is going to be called Metasploitable. And this is going to be a Linux Ubuntu uh, setup. Again, default settings are fine. However, here when it's time to select the hard drive, we are not going to create a new one. Instead, we're going to use an existing hard drive file. We'll choose that file by going to our VirtualBox VMs into the Metasploitable 2 Linux folder and selecting the VMDK. We will now click Create, and our VirtualBox is now installed for Metasploitable 2. We're going to go into Settings, and we're going to make a quick change to Network. Since this is a very exploitable, intentionally vulnerable uh, installation, we want to make sure it's not actually connecting to the internet, and instead just using the internal network, which we set up on Kali as well, so that they can communicate together. We'll select OK. And now we're going to go ahead and click Start to launch Metasploitable.
login is msf admin and so is the password as noted in the prompt above Once everything is done booting, we're going to edit our Etsy, Etsy network interfaces file. Using nano. And we're going to change our interface from DHCP to static with an address of 10.0.0.100 a net mask of 255.255.255.0 and a gateway of 10.0.0.1 Control X will exit prompting us to save changes yes file name remains the same and now we should be able to restart networking IF config will allow us to see our settings and we can see our internet address is now 10.0.0.100. Now that we have both virtual machines installed, we're going to boot them up and verify that our pen testing lab is set up and ready to go. I'm going to boot Kali over there and I'm going to boot Metasploitable in its own window over here. Now the way we're going to verify our network adapters are set up correctly is we wanted Kali to be able to connect to the internet. We're going to verify that it can do so by pinging the Google website. And we also want Kali to be able to connect with Metasploitable. We'll verify that by having Kali ping Metasploitable. On the Metasploitable side, we do not want that exposed to the internet. So we're going to verify it cannot ping Google. And we want to verify it can talk to Kali so we will verify that it can contact Kali. Looks like these are almost done booting. We will log into the Kali machine first using the username and password we set up on installation. We're going to open up the terminal. Let me make that full screen. Verify our network adapters are configured correctly. And it appears they are. We have an F0 and an F1. We're going to do a ping for google.com. It looks like that's successful. And we are going to do a ping on the Metasploitable IP address, which was 10.0.0.100. It looks like that was successful as well. We will now switch over to our Metasploitable virtual machine, and we are going to log in using the username MSF admin, and the same thing as the password. We're going to check our adapters and verify that we only have the one Ethernet adapter at F0, set to 10.0.0.100. That is correct. So now we're going to do a ping against Google, and hopefully this is going to time out. We do not want this box connected to the internet. It is very, very vulnerable. And that ping failed just like we hoped it would. Now we're going to make sure it can connect with our Kali box, which is at 10.0.0.200. And it looks like it can, so we're going to call that a success. Our pen testing lab is now set up and ready for use.